Let's pop into the comments. Let us know where you're watching live from, how your day has been. It's two o'clock here in Charlotte, North Carolina. So of course we had finished lunch and what better time than to do a little afternoon stitch out with everyone on our Thursday. All right, so guys, I ran to get here at two o'clock. So I hope you're happy <laughs> that I made it on time. All right, so before we get started, Again, my name is Melissa. I wanted to go ahead and introduce what project we're stitching today, um, how it is our featured technique of the week this week. And I hope to hear some people uh, signing on. Catherine, do we have any people that are commenting or saying hi? We have Candy from Tulsa. Hi, Candy. And Sherry from California. <laughs> and Sherry in sunny California. I imagine it's nice there. So thank you guys for tuning in. I know you're in different places across the country, so we love to see you tuning in with us. Today we are going to be talking about a really cool quilting technique that we call trapunto. And I wanted to give a little bit of a backstory on trapunto and how it's done. And then we'll go into the materials and how exactly we're gonna do it and I can help demonstrate that today. So a trapunto technique is definitely a traditional quilting technique that if you are a quilter that does quilting by hand, you might be familiar with it, but it is the Italian term of the word to quilt. So it has a definition to the name itself and whenever you look at traditional quilts, this is the effect that you see when the stitching goes into the fabric and the material kind of lofts up over the surface of the quilt, creating this really pretty puffed effect. Now there's normal quilting stitches that quilt your batting and your layers together. And then there's the trapunto technique. And trapunto is different because we're actually adding even more extra stuff to it to help those elements loft up over the quilt. Now, traditionally, this is what I was taught, so if you've learned something different, comment and sound off and let us know. But when I was trained here through Anita, I had originally been taught that trapunto was done by hand by taking your finished quilt blocks or your quilt top, and you have your normal batting in there and you've quilted it, but then you have to take a seam ripper to the back of your block and rip it open and add polyfill or cording or stuffing into the elements that you wanted to rise up over the quilt. Now, I can only imagine how painstaking that is to sit there and do it for all your different blocks, but also you're ripping up something you just spent so much time to like put together and assemble, and it can be really painstaking, let alone knowing if the puff is even throughout the design and how long that'll take you to finish the whole quilt. So Anita wanted to make this 10 times easier, especially if you're a beginner quilter, on how that process works. Now, I don't have the physical quilt sample for the one that I'm doing today, which is why I chose it to stitch out and show it to you. But I do have the pack cover of what it looks like online. Um, I will be stitching a, a block from our Baroque quilt. Now, this is a beautiful quilt. I'll show you guys the cover up close so you can kind of see the quilt in the image. Look at that, I wrote this one. Um, very pretty. And we did it in a slubby gray material, so almost like a stretchy cotton jersey. And today I'll be doing it with this light blue linen. I did interface the back of it, so I'll mention that again later when we go over materials. But I'm doing it in a different color just to show a different effect. And I do have a second detail image to kind of show you where that lofting happens. So obviously you can see the shadows in there. That technique helps rise those elements over the rest of the quilt. So you can imagine how beautiful of an heirloom quilt this would be to pass down. And all you have to knew, know how to do is sew straight lines for when you join your blocks together. The effect itself is done in the digitizing. And so I'm gonna help go over how that process works today. And I have a block loaded in my machine for us to stitch out. Now to go over the materials that we're gonna need, I hope everyone is excited to learn. If you've never seen a trapunto block, I promise that this effect is really cool. I will never say it's quick, but it is easy. <laughs> so it is a time consuming process, but as I was chatting with our team yesterday about how you could make this quilt, it would work out if you stitched a block a day, you'd finish it in however many blocks you want your quilt to be. So if you get frustrated easily, stick to one a day and you'll be able to stay with the process and make them really pretty and then have that finished quilt. So for the process of making a trapunto quilt block or all quilt blocks with Anita, we always use our no-show mesh stabilizer. So I went ahead and grabbed a piece of no-show mesh and fit it to my hoop. And we're gonna go ahead and load that into the machine and lock in our hoop frame. I'm gonna go ahead and thread my needle so that's ready to go. Tina says she is excited to learn. Yeah, Tina, I'm excited to teach you. I'm glad you tuned in with us. This is a really fun technique and Side note, we have other projects that do this technique, but this is specifically a quilt block, but I will show you some other applications of this trapunto effect. So I went ahead and in my machine, thank you, Haley, she wanted to make sure you guys can see what's going on here. 
So I have the block pulled up in my screen. I am stitching the A size, so if you're curious, that was measuring about 7.7. .7. So I have my base fabric cut a little bit larger than that. And then the other materials that I'm going to need is, of course, the batting. Now, I wanted to talk about batting for a second because that's definitely an important part of the Trapunto effect. I have multiple types here, and I'm going to stick with one for the demonstration and then show you an effect on another kind of batting um, for finishing off the block. So we have lots of batting. Different types, um, I want to say almost all the types we use here in Need a Good Design are cotton or cotton blend um, types of em embroidery and quilting batting. The other kinds that they have are like bamboo and polyester type mixtures as well, and that just changes the way the feel of the quilt will be. Um, we like to use warm and natural, if you're ever curious, that's usually what Anita has on hand, and that is some of what I have here. Um, I did want to note that none of the packaging was with the batting that I grabbed today, so my guess is as good as it can be for which ones I have here, but going off of looks, I can tell you the differences. So I do have a warm and natural here that feels a little bit more plush and fluffy. I didn't cut it down to size because I used this one in a block that I set aside to show you guys this technique shortly. But this one has a bit of a plush feel to it. It's definitely squishy feeling. Um, and it does have those little bits of the shell in it like natural cotton batting tends to have. And I believe that was by the Warm and Natural Company. We also have Warm and Natural. But notice that this one's a different thickness and it's not quite as fluffy. They are different. I just can't tell you which one's which. Um, off the top of my head, but I do know Warm and Natural has the little bits of the cotton shells in them that you see there. The texture is just different though. This one's definitely more like needle punched and flattened, while the other one's a little more fluffy. So depending the effect you want, you can go super fluffy or you can go for the more conservative flat. The effect will still work for you. The last one I have here is closer to like bamboo um, type of batting. It's thin, it's nice and bright and it still has that nice quilt feel to it when you run stitches over it. Now the way the Trapunto effect works is we actually use multiple layers of batting to create the block. So to get started, I'm gonna go ahead and run the first step in the design, which is already programmed in for me. I put it on my stick and I'm ready to go. So I'm gonna run the first step and this is that placement stitch for us. Or in Anita, we like to call it the squaring stitch. So anytime you do quilt blocks, this initial step that runs for the block, whether it's a rectangle or a square, that's known as our squaring stitch because it's squaring off where we're going to place the quilt blocks batting. Do you have a couple questions if you have a Yeah, what kind of questions we have for us today? Uh, Julie would like to know if we pre-shrink our dough show and Candy would like to know which side of the batting is up. That is a great question. So do we pre-shrink our no-show mesh? No, we don't. Um, the no-show mesh that we use is already ready to go. We cut it off the bolt. I have never been taught to pre-wash, but remember, Anita creates quilts for samples, not for home use. So if you found that washing your no-show mesh helps with shrinkage, try washing some yardage of it maybe, and then trimming it to fit your hoop and embroidering. I have not been personally taught that trick, but we also don't keep our quilts to use over the time. So definitely give that a trial run. Maybe you make a little sampler quilt and one you wash with the no-show mesh and one you don't and see what the results look like. Um, but we do not. So if you want to know what we're doing, <laughs> we haven't washed ours. We cut it off of the either a roll that we get or we'll get it pre-cut in sheets. So that's a good question there. And what was our other one? Which side is the batting is the correct side? That's a question that they never taught me here either. So I'll tell you the truth, if I place it whichever way I grab it and I've noticed no difference in the quilting, um, that does change if you're using insole bright or insulated batting. That does want that insulated surface to be closer to the heat source, um, but that's a technique for another day, so you don't have to worry about that one. But when it comes to batting, I do see that one side tends to have more bits of shell is what I like to call it, while the other side's a little bit more clean. I like the clean side to face up. Now, if there's a proper name for that, you guys can educate everyone else today and let us know in the comments. But I know one side looks messier than the other. We're gonna do the clean side up. And the reason I suggest that for most of my blocks is if you have a sheer or light colored fabric, you don't wanna see those little bits coming through white fabric and such. So that would be my recommendation. Good questions, you guys. Keep them coming in the comments and I'll be sure to answer some throughout the series or video and at the end as we go. But I'm going to go ahead and pull this block a little closer so you guys can see what's going on. We got our squaring stitch here. It is in a light blue, so if it's hard to see, that's our choice of color for today. 
But I'm gonna go ahead and take my quilt batting. And again, if you guys can see on camera, this is the like side with all the little bits and shell pieces in it. That's what I call it. <laughs> I'm sure there's technical terms, but we're teaching this at a beginner standpoint. So again, I put that side face down so that the smooth, prettier side of the batting is facing up. And then what I'm gonna do is slide my hoop in and we're gonna run the next step in the machine, which is programmed to be a two ply tacking stitch. And that is gonna help secure our batting in place. Now, if you've ever stitched a quilt block with Anita, you'll notice that the process so far is the same as every other quilt block that we do in the hoop. And very simple. So we have been talking about the Anita's quilting methods versus traditional quilting um, this week and in the weeks to come. So we're gonna give you guys some more education on why quilting in the hoop every Friday is so great with our designs and all the beautiful things you can make with it. And this is definitely one of those examples. So this is a really cool heirloom technique, technically, or a very time-honored traditional practice that you can do much easier and a little bit more user-friendly. Is it called scrim? Scrim, yes. I believe scrim is the pattern that you see in it. Um, if I have my camera over here, it has like a light texture and almost like lines running through it. I believe that is the scrim is what I Googled. So yes, thank you for pointing that out. That is correct. And they have needle punched versus, um, I want to say the scrim kind as well. But again, I don't buy your batting. I just use the batting <laughs> that's here in office if we're being honest. So they could probably let us know better and we can always comment later if we find out it's something different. But every time I've asked Steve, we say warm and natural <laughs> is what we use. If you're using a light base fabric, then definitely do like warm or warm and white, I think it is, or white and bright. Um, to talk through what I'm doing right now, we just tacked down that batting for our quilt block. And that's how all of our blocks are done in Anita if you're new to quilting in the hoop. But we went ahead and applied that batting. And now that it's secure, I'm using my double curved embroidery scissors to trim away that excess. The reason we do this is because you don't want all this excess batting in your seam allowance. If you leave it on the edges of the block, and then we take two blocks and try to piece them together, you're gonna have what we like to call speed bumps in your quilt. That's what they used to tell me they're called. And I always got a chuckle out of people when I said, you don't want a lumpy, bumpy quilt, unless you intended it to be that way. So we have our batting trimmed down, there it is. And that is our essential block, or creates the block itself. So now what we're gonna do is stick the hoop back in the machine, and this is where the fun part of the trapunto comes in. So what I'm gonna do is take two pieces of additional batting here, and we mentioned that scrim side versus the plain side. I'm just gonna use simple layman's terms, plain versus speckly side, <laughs> just for you guys to understand what I mean. So I'm taking that plain side, and I'm gonna double up and just line up the two layers that I have in my hand. So there we go. And we're gonna lay that directly over the entire quilt block. And what's gonna happen next is it's going to tack that pattern that is going to be the trapunto into the block. Now, earlier when I laid my batting, I had enough seam allowance to make sure I had like at least a half inch. This is not as picky because as long as it covers the, the block in the hoop, you'll have enough batting to do it. So while I discuss some more tips and tricks on that, we're gonna go ahead and start that step. It's going to take a couple minutes, so we're just going to let it run. I'm starting it with my hands just so I can make sure everything lays nice and flat. And you'll see that it's just running that two-ply tacking stitch, creating that pattern. There was no placement stitch for this trapunto, so that is something important I wanted to mention to you guys. When we do trapunto, we just lay that batting over the whole block, and it's going to stitch out that pattern that becomes the puffy elements. So very cool, you will see it jump to different spots in the design, so it just did that one corner flower, and now it goes up to the top. Again, I just kind of keep an eye on my batting, make sure it lays nice and flat while it gets going, and we'll keep that running. Now, notice I have those two layers of batting and it's tacking on top of that other original piece. That means our trapunto area in the design will have three pieces of batting. And the reason I brought other batting types is to show you how that effect is done. So I do have these thinner pieces here, that's what I'm using in this one. But we also have that really fluffy, kind of puffier looking batting. And it's not puffy batting, there is no loft to this per se. If 
I unfold it, you can see one piece is still fairly thin, but it just has a much more loose construction to the types of fibers in there. And it is cottony for feel, um, but it doesn't look quite as nice with what they call the scrim pattern in it. So I think this one's just a little less fancy. So we've been using a lot of this. I think this was an order accident for us. So we prefer the thin, smooth batting. Um, but if you're looking for a puffy effect in your trapunto, definitely try that fluffier looking batting. Um, another thing I wanted to mention while we're talking about types of batting to use is when you look up Trapunto on our website, uh, you'll get lots of different quilts. I want to say like 30 or so different collections pop up. Um, but I went in recently and added our puffy applique technique under Trapunto as well. So I wanted to touch on that. There'll be a day for that technique in the future, so we'll go over puffy a little bit more. But I didn't want people to be confused when they see projects on there as well as quilt blocks because you can use this puffy like type of um, style in your appliques um, in blocks and in other projects. So I have some things to show you guys once we lay our base fabric. I'll kind of go over that with you and show you how you can use this puffy effect in other things. Um, but the term trapunto is definitely more of a quilting term. So if you ever see that lofted appeal in like appliques or that look that looks really puffy over the block itself, um, definitely trapunto if it's in a quilt. If it's in a project, we like to call that puffy applique. Um, I did a technique search on our website and puffy applique only resulted with like two or three things. So we just kind of combined them. So if you ever see us say puffy applique, it's like Trapunto had a baby with a project. So <laughs> you make puffy elements um, using the embroidery machine. So we're still going here with our little flowers. Do I have any other questions on process while we're checking in? Can you like to know what boot size you're using, your foot height, and what speed you're running at? The speed, I want to say, is it's set to max, which is 1,000 RPM for the machine. But depending the stitch length in your programming, it will adjust its speed itself. Uh, it doesn't have a running speed for me right now, but it told me it'd take about four minutes for this step, so I'm just kind of waiting. Um, the foot height, we never change at Anita. I'm running a baby lock Solaris. Is this the two? I want to say this is the Solaris two is the machine we're on. Um, and whatever the default setting is for the foot, that is what it's set to. So we haven't changed our foot height. Uh, that's a good question if you're bringing it up because of lofted batting. If you are using a higher loft, you can try adjusting your foot um, presser height or embroidery foot height to be a little higher if you're worried about it dragging or catching. Um, but we've not had any issues with it. And I will tell you a secret tip about Anita's puffy stuff. Um, Trapunto won't do this, but puffy batting things that have that one inch high loft in it, we do a special spot tack in that tacking stitch. So if it is a puffy element that has like one inch high loft batting in it, we tend to spot tack around the design motif before running that two ply, and that helps clear the path of the presser foot. So basically the embroidery foot won't get caught because it's doing spot tacks to help outline it. Um, for Trapunto, since it's just quilting and we're not using, usually not using one inch loft, it doesn't need a presser foot or height change. I keep saying presser, but I'm pretty sure it's just embroidery foot. But we did not change our height on that. And if you're curious what hoop size I'm using, I have an eight by 12 in the machine right now. Um, I have another hoop set aside to show you this Trapunto technique, technique um, shortly. And that was our other hoop. I wanna say that hoop is the eight by eight, nine and a half by nine and a half. So if you can use a square hoop for quilt blocks, I highly recommend. Um, you'll notice in our tutorials, we tend to practice good behavior. We don't always get to do it ourselves, but good behavior would be use the smallest hoop that your design can fit in. Always try to size the hoop to your project. That way it doesn't bounce around when the stabilizer's running. That's usually the reason why. So I have eight by 12, my block is 7.7, .7, so that's perfect in width. And then I had just a little extra at the top and bottom, but eight by 12 or eight by eight, nine and a half by nine and a half, that's the size it is. Um, those would be my recommendations, but very good questions, you guys. I love that you're asking all the important things today. So we are almost done with that motif, and then I'm going to show you guys this trimming process. I really hope Trapunto has been fun to watch it like do this really cool batting stitch. Now, we previewed this earlier on our social media so you could kind of see what that looked like. Because I think people hear Trapunto, they see the finished block, and they don't really know what to expect. So while we're making it, I really want to show you those behind the scenes. And now comes the fun part. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and remove my hoop from the machine, bring it over to my cutting space, and I'm going to show you guys that off so you can see that really pretty floral motif here. 
Now there's tons of different blocks in the collection I'm stitching from, which is Baroque Quilt. Um, we can try to link that product for you in the comment section later so you guys can shop it if you're interested. But I went ahead and ran that uh, tacking stitch for the Trapunto and you'll see we have our floppy layers of batting. Now in order to create the Trapunto effect, I'm going to show you some trimming, start it and kind of converse with you about it. And then I'm going to jump to my already trimmed version because as I mentioned earlier, this is a very easy process, but it is time consuming. Um, my first pro tip for you in all of our Trapunto tutorials tends to be good sharp pair of curved embroidery scissors and to cut one layer at a time. Now I was ambitious the other day when I did our sample block I am going to show you and I cut both layers at once. And it happened in about 10 minutes for one block if you want a time estimate. But if you're okay with taking your time and making this more meditative, uh, I suggest doing one layer at a time because then your scissors aren't getting as stuck and you can kind of maneuver. You can even take a break <laughs> between trimming. Um, and it's not difficult and the shapes aren't super complicated. But what I'm going to do is just kind of follow the stitch line and start trimming that top layer of batting. I'll trim that first one best I can while we're going through it and then kind of talk you guys through what it'll look like as we keep going. But I don't want you to sit here and have to watch me trim batting for <laughs> over 10 minutes. So we're just going to give you a quick peek of that and then show you what the finished trim looks like. So again, I have sharp curved tip scissors. What I want to point out is how picky you can be when trimming versus not picky. And I'm going to grab the phone in a second and show you up close so you can see what I'm talking about. But I'm trying to get some of the excess away so you can see what I mean. Cut around the tip of my flower. Again, good sharp scissors are your best friend for this technique and snip with the tip of the scissors. I see people try to like jam the whole scissor in there and I'm like, just the tip. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> if you just use the very tip of the scissors, it's very snippy there and that'll help you get a nice clean cut without cutting anything away. Now what I want to show you here in the trim is here is our block so you can kind of see what it looked like before. And we had that double layer of batting. So I trimmed away the first layer and then you can see the second layer here. Now, I trimmed both away right here so you can see this flower. You don't need to be super picky about these little elements. I know people's hands that ache or hurt, they're like, I don't love trimming. Applique is not my favorite for this reason. That's why I said try one block a day. Make this like a long-term project because it is a really pretty heirloom quilt. Um, but what I wanted to mention is all these little flower ticks and marks, as long as you're semi-close to the line, you guys, it will be fine because we're going to lay base fabric over it and it will bean stitch around these elements, which that itself will help it loft up over the block. So I'm gonna trim just a little bit more so I can kind of show you maybe like half of it trimmed and then I'll show you the full thing so you can get the visual of that effect. And fire away if you have more questions, I'm gonna do my best to answer them with whatever knowledge I have for you guys. Um, tacking color doesn't matter. If you're curious, I use the same color I'm about to use on the actual block, which for me is light blue. And again, we cut into those little leaves. And this is why I said one layer might be easier than two because sometimes you have to pull back the layer to really get it close to the stitching and then you can do the second layer under it. So to save us time, and because I'm sure you guys sitting on live are like, I don't wanna watch her trim this forever. First, we're gonna give you the reward for tuning in. I wanted you guys to know that the sale for this weekend is going to be, oh, give me the percentage Haley because I've done a million percents today. Is it 30, 40? <laughs> it's like, do we have a slide banner we could show them for it? We might not. Um, give me a second while I get you an ex exact amount. But we are doing a sale on Trapunto this weekend. And because that's the technique I'm teaching today, the people who tuned into our live get to shop that sale early and it starts today. Um, and that will be on your purchase of any Trapunto collection. They are going to be um, linked and I can have a link put into the Facebook page as well for that technique and YouTube. I'll go back in later and add that. So if you're looking for it, just give us like 20, 30 minutes after the live and I'll add those into the product or video descriptions. But I don't want to pull out my phone and look for it. So I'm leaving Haley to tell me. Rita says she's enjoying the class and thank you. Thank you, Rita. I hope you guys try this Trapunto technique. And again, I'll show you some other stuff while it's stitching the base fabric that we can do with this kind of effect. We got a number on there? Here, I'll look it up real fast. Mm -hmm. We're gonna be naughty and look real fast. I have my notes for you guys. Wait, did Kelly Fox get something? 
It should be. I think it's 35. 35. 35. Yeah. We wanted to make sure we gave you the right amount. I didn't want to tell you something lowball and then it'd be wrong. 35% off our Trapunto collection. So if you're online today and tuned into the live, that is available now. You can start shopping it with that sale. There won't be advertisements for it till tomorrow. Um, but when you add it to your cart, it should apply the discount for you. You shouldn't have to type anything in. Um, we set it active on the back end. So only the people who tuned in and know about it know that those collections will be 35% off. I'm going to trim this piece away and then show you guys that finished trim so you guys can kind of see what it looks like. Get all this excess out of here. You'll have like a batting show. So here you can see my <laughs> half trimmed effect here. But you can see as we start to pull out those extra layers, those elements start to come puffy. So now I'm going to swap my hoop because I'm sneaky and went ahead and stitched this ahead of time for you guys. And I have it here. <laughs> and the beautiful thing about this is this one in this hoop is done with that puffier looking cotton batting that I mentioned earlier. Um, this is what I had on hand when I was running the first sample. And it was harder to trim because of the effect of that like softer feel. Um, but the effect of the raised batting looks really pretty. I'm going to show you guys that with that phone camera so you can see how dimensional it looks. And you can inspect my trims. Mm -hmm. So you can see how close I got to tacking stitches here. You can still see a little bit. Like if I took my scissors here, you could probably trim some of this stuff up a little bit. But see this little corner piece that goes into the leaves? You don't need to trim that out. Like I got a little bit I could cut out here. But again, the point is that you see the raised effect. So now what we're going to do is I'll put the phone down. We'll drop this back into the machine. And now we're going to go ahead and lay our base fabric. And this is where the effect really comes to life. So I'm going to take my base linen that I have. Now let's know I've not run it in linen yet. So this is a test for all of us because the first time we ran this on the tutorial images, I mentioned we used like a slubby cotton that had a slight stretch to it. Now, if you have a fabric like Jersey cotton or something that has a stretch, highly recommend because it will work better with that lock. And I'm going to pull my hoop out just so I can make sure my fabric is aligned. If you're new to quilting in the hoop with Anita, we always recommend cutting your block a half inch bigger on all sides. That way you have a half inch seam allowance. You can always have larger fabric and trim your block down later, but we went ahead and pre-cut so it was nice and pretty for you. And I did mention this is a linen, so I have a iron-on fusible interface to the back. This is just like um, iron-on interfacing. I was about to say something else and then I lost it, but there you go. So a nice bright white back to it so it helps that color stand out. And I just want to eyeball and make sure I have about a half inch all the way around. So that's what I'm doing right now. It looks good to me. The real test will be when we tack it. And we'll go ahead and run that tacking step. Yes, that's fine. You can move. There we go. And again, I'm comfortable with my hands near the machine, but if you're newer and don't like it, you can use tape. Just tape down your fabric. And I'd say I did a pretty good job eyeballing that half inch. There we go. And of course, it's going to do its normal two-ply tack down right now for the base fabric. And then after that, it's going to run that trapunto pattern. So what we're watching right now is just securing the base. And again, if you're just tuning in, we're stitching this trapunto technique from our Baroque quilt. Came out a couple years ago. I want to say, I don't have the handy year next to me, but I want to say 2019 or 2018. 2018. And I was here for that. <laughs> so y'all might remember the first time we released it. But beautiful collection. We don't talk about some of our older stuff enough, especially to our newer people who don't know what came out years ago and haven't seen this. I really wanted to show off this technique because the blocks are so pretty. And we don't often have time to stitch a quilt together live on camera, so you never often see us stitching things block to block. Maybe one day we can do a video series on that again. But I still like showing you guys how it's done in the hoop, because literally finishing the quilt is just sewing straight lines together and putting on a back fabric and binding. So that's less intensive as understanding the whole process here. So we got our fabric tacked down. Last step in the machine for the design, it says about 11 minutes for embroidery, we'll see. <laughs> and we're going to go ahead and run that step. And this is what's really going to help that trapunto like show off and loft up and really give that raised effect for us. So first thing I notice, I look at my screen to kind of see what the cursor is doing over here. It's doing that grid background, which in place of stippling for this collection, we have this really pretty quilting stitch. So I'll show you guys that up close too so you can see. 
but it's doing like this little crosshatch pattern that you see here. And if I show it to my screen, you can see where the cursor's running that embroidery. So it's gonna go ahead and fill some of that in first. It might do some jumps and cuts around as it figures out where the design was at. And that's all in the digitizing for you. So you guys don't have to guess where do I leave space for an element? How do I get this part to be puffy? It just does it all for you. You just get to sit and watch. So super fun to see how that works. Now, I did wanna talk about sizing in this collection because as we just mentioned, this one was from 2018. So this came out a little while ago. Um, I had the master page pulled up and printed all the tutorial out with me, but I wanted to mention that we do have mix and match quilt sizes, which in the coming weeks, we're gonna explore what all that means if you're new to mix and match, or maybe you just haven't had a lesson with Anita in a while and you forgot all the fun details about our quilting in the hoop system. But if you are familiar, you know that we offer most of our quilt block sizes in up to six sizes, which fits the largest hoop on the market to about a five by seven is our D-sized quilt block. Um, and in a couple years past, they did not have that big hoop on the market. So before we had that jumbo hoop, which I believe is like 10 and 5 16 or something by 16 inches, so it's huge. I can almost hula hoop through it if you guys want to have a chuckle at that. But the block added an extra size for a chart. So now we go up to triple A sizing, which again, I'll mention this as we break down techniques and quilting throughout the next few weeks. Um, but when this Baroque quilt came out, we actually only had five sizes. So if you are looking to purchase this one, it comes with five options. The largest block size is nine by nine. The smallest is 4.7 by 4.7. So what that tells you is this will fit in a five by seven hoop. So you could make a mini version of this heirloom technique, which is really cool to think about because let's say you're new and don't wanna do a massive quilt like the ones you always see us show off. You could do a little sampler and just hang that in your sewing space or in your kitchen. Um, or even fun idea for you, you do all D size and make like a little um, placemat and you could put flowers and stuff around it. So lots of ways to practice your techniques without committing to a long-term project. Um, I did want to go over that Baroque effect, or the Baroque, the Baroque quilt, the Trapunto effect. So you guys can see it in some other collections, not just this one. So I... I will tell you, finding Trapunto samples was hard. Our sample room is a nightmare right now, and we're reorganizing. So because of that, I have a limited number of samples, but the first one I wanted to show off is from Trapunto Christmas. Now, this is a really cute classic Christmas collection. It's never too early to get started for Christmas stitch outs, because I know people love to make quilts for Christmas, and that takes time. Um, the Trapunto patterns in this one are much simpler. So if you are watching and you wanna try Trapunto, it's gonna be on sale starting today, 35% off for you guys. Um, but if you don't wanna do this complex pattern that we have going on, I wanted to pick a really pretty one that shows like that heirloom style. But this is a great version of Trapunto for beginners. That's a little bit easier, the shapes are simpler. Um, in this one, we have the puffy snowmen, the holly, and then this collection also included sashing and squaring in different sizes to help you create a full quilt. Now this one's just a sampler. I have a couple of them here. I'll show them on the phone as well so you can see the effect. But just so you can see the designs. Snowman, I love the little stocking with the gingerbread guy. And then I think I got one more of the Trapunto Christmas here. We got a sled, Santa's sleigh, sleigh, not sled. And then really cute little bear, angelic bear with its trumpet. And they got a Christmas tree and some holly. So now if I show you this up close, you can kind of see this Trapunto effect. But this is where that extra batting locks up, like almost done with like quilt feather technique. So that's really pretty. And you can see our built-in stippling. And then you can see here, again, we have some puffy elements in there. It's hard to show, but you can see that it is lofted over the rest of the quilt. You got this really cute sled. And again, depending how many layers of batting you use, or what kind of batting, if you use this fluffier kind versus the thinner kind, it will change how puffed up this looks. So like this one to me looks like they used a much puffier batting because it has that really cute quilted effect. But you'll notice it is puffed more than the background is. So that's kind of what this Trapunto does. That's a great one. You can kind of see the little leaves in there and that puffy snowman. So cute. <laughs> this one is Trapunto Christmas. If you are curious about what I'm showing off, there it is, Trapunto Christmas. Super cute, and these are again just little samplers. So if you don't want to stitch a whole quilt, like you can always do what we did, make a little wall hanging or panel to show off. 
These would be very cute as placemats if you moved the sashing maybe to the side and made it like a mix and match shape placemat for Christmas dinner. That'd be really cute. And machine friendly. You can throw them like in the washing machine. They ever get dirty. Um, if you're ever curious what the backs of our samples look like, when we don't pick a fun fabric, we just use muslin. And you can see that we stitch in the ditch, which is where the blocks join together. So definitely quilting made easy for beginners. The next one I have, super cute desserts. It makes me think of Valentine's Day, which is right around the corner. Even though this is not a Valentine's collection in the slightest, it's just food. Pretty sure it's under our food category. Um, but it is called Indulgence. And this collection was released quite a while ago. It is 2024, and I will tell you guys, the date on the back of the sample says it is 10 years old. So this one is from 2014. So I'm sure a lot of you haven't seen this yet, unless you've been around for quite a while with us, which I don't doubt. We have wonderful customers. But if you're tuned in and have never heard of Indulgence, this is a really cute one. I wish I had more blocks to show it to you, but it is dessert themed. And so they're like candies and bonbons. And they do have that like puffy batting in here and it feels so squishy when you poke it. So super cute. I love the cake. <laughs> the cake is the best block in the set, I swear. So if you have a pastry person in your family or maybe just a birthday coming up. Side note, my birthday is next month, you guys. Someone stitch me this really cute cake and mail it to Anita. I'd love that. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. I'll have to do that. But very fun puffed effect. I thought you guys would like this one so cute with the treats and that sashing is included with it and again there's our stippling built into the block you don't have to guess or draw any of that it just comes right into the design it's super cute with that plush cake <laughs> and again that one is indulgence if you're curious since 2014 so we can take a quick peek I'm sorry Haley I switched from phone camera and we're going right back to it I wanted to show you guys the status of this block. So now you can kind of see that trapunto forming. We haven't even outlined these center shapes yet. All we're doing was that grid background. And you can already tell how pretty that pattern is looking. And I'm gonna be truthfully honest with you guys. I'm happily surprised, because like I said, we did it in a jersey like knit for the first collection and I chose linen. So I didn't know how well it would loft with that linen, but it's doing it and it looks so good. So we're gonna keep that running. I'll check in with it again shortly. But I hope you guys are learning a lot about Trapunto. Very fun. Now I mentioned earlier how we have puffy applique as a technique too, but when I did a filter on our website, not enough came up when we definitely have more than three collections with it. So I tagged some of them to fall under the Trapunto category, but essentially Trapunto and puffy applique are very similar. We're adding extra fluff to the design elements to help them rise up over things. Now these are stitch outs done on felt, but they are embroidery collection files. They are made to be put on anything you can imagine from kids clothes to bags or backpacks. And the collection was called Squishy Friends. <laughs> so, so adorable of a name, um, but they are really cute. I'm gonna lay a few out and then show them off to you. We did use a Lycra fabric for these designs. Oh my gosh, you guys, they're just so adorable. Let's take a peek at these. <laughs> So cute, okay, so they were definitely kids friendly collections. It was made for kids. Steve said that this collection was inspired by Ren and Otto wanting these fun squishy plushies and we won't name any names, but that is what inspired them. <laughs> there is a brand out there we won't name, but this is kind of the same effect in a cute little applique design. So instead of a plush figure, you can put this on like their bags or their clothes and you can see how that puffiness is in there. Now what these are made with is that high loft batting. So we bought about an inch to an inch and a half rise um, and you just lay one piece under the applique and then it tacks it down and does the embroidery with it. So this is kind of that Trapunto effect, but shown in an embroidery collection. I love this sparkly strawberry, it's just so cute. And we got pizza in here, with that fun squishy material. We got a hippo and you can really see it guys. When I press, you can see squish in him. These are so funny. I swear our designs make me just as excited as they do for you guys. I look at them even after I've ran them and helped design them with people and they're still so fun. We got a little kitty here, <laughs> so cute. And a popsicle, he's very fun too with the different colors in here. So again, we got some yardage of that Lycra jersey or Lycra spandex is what that is. Um, and they're just applique designs. So they can go on any material, but when we do standard applique and embroidery, we show it off on felt. That way we just don't waste fabric or project material items. 
So again, that is Squishy Friends, and they should fall under that sale. So if you're looking for Trapunto stuff, that should pop up in there for you. And now, I have here, we'll stick those away while we're waiting on our design to stitch. Again, if you're tuned in and you're wondering, well, what was today's promo? The secret is that tomorrow, Trapunto will be going on sale for 35% off to everyone. Um, and we'll have a banner in our email for Friday. We'll announce it. But if you tuned in today, you guys can shop that sale starting now. Um, it just won't say it anywhere on the site. It should work that if you add the product to your cart, it'll take off the 35% for you automatically. Um, I have one different version of Trapunto to show you, and then I have one classic version to wrap it all up while we wait. So I wanted to show off this beautiful collection that was called, I think it's Woodland Critters is the name of it. Woodland Holiday Quilts. I wanted to make sure I have the name right. Um, this is, again, going into a different type of the variation of the technique, but this comes up under Trapunto because it was done with our reverse Trapunto. So this is, I think, the only collection we did reverse Trapunto in. I can't be positive without Googling it on our website. But um, reverse Trapunto is doing the same thing, and I'll kind of talk you through that while we're waiting for our stitch out. But here is the full quilt or some of it. There are more blocks than what's shown here, but very pretty. It's definitely a Christmas themed quilt or winter themed. And you'll notice all these beautiful embroidered animals and detailed stitches here. And what I wanna show you on the phone camera is that these are puffed up as well. Now they do have embroidery on them. And this is why this was such a unique technique for us. But you can see there how the animal is kind of lofted up over the quilts. Show you off the bird as well. The acorn's hard to see, but the acorn is like that as well. And then we have a little deer down here, which is puffed up a bit too. Now the way these were done is obviously stitching something flattens it. And when we do trapunto, we're trying to make it puffy. So in order to do this, this collection was actually done with multiple hoopings. So we embroider the animal first in its own hooping and it gets kind of done on tearaway, I'm pretty sure is how we did it. And you have like this little motif that has extra layers of batting in the back of it. Then when you go to stitch the block, it'll put a placement stitch for you to lay your animal and then it tacks it down and it gets these like sketchy stitch shading all over the edge to kind of conceal it. So this was made to look like a hand-drawn pencil sketch kind of style, so that's why the threads are like that. It has that sketchy look to it, you can kind of see the edge there. And that's what helps secure it, almost like a patch being secured to the quilt. This is definitely more of a display quilt than a cuddle up quilt, just so you don't get it and think that it's soft and cuddly because it does have these denser shapes on it. But this one hung from a wooden dowel. Stunning, you guys, stunning. I love it. It's our only one. You what? It's the only one. Ah, yes, it is. It is the only one that I know of with that reverse, but there's that cute little fox. So cute and he's funny. And again, we did like a little sampler there. So if you ever don't want to commit to a full quilt, you can get the collection, our binding came out down there, um, and show it off just like that. And again, this is a standard embroidery quilt block done in the hoop, so you guys can kind of see a different in technique. Just plain standard embroidery. And then that really cute puppy. And he is plush. He's just embroidered, so he feels kind of thick. Um, but it's definitely a really pretty holiday quilt to display. So actually, I lied, Haley. I'm not putting it down. <laughs> Give them a sneak peek of the block. There it goes. It's finished. All right, now I'll put the phone down and <laughs> show you guys some finishing for that. And we'll go ahead and set all my stuff down. So I hope that's given you a little bit of an inside peek into how the Trapunto technique is done. We're going to pull the hoop off of the machine, show it off, kind of give you a look at that. Very pretty. I love that light blue color. So we did it in gray the first time we ever ran it. I haven't seen it done in a color yet. And I thought this was still a nice neutral, but with spring coming just around the corner, a nice light and airy color was definitely something we needed. So that's the finished block. Um, let's see if we can get an angled shot here so you guys can see. I have this beautiful window behind me so I can show you guys the shadows on this as the light hits it. Look at that. So pretty. Oh, it looks good. <laughs> yes, and that is with two layers of batting. So if you want to get crazy and do three extra layers, you could. Again, you just have to monitor when it's doing that tack down of the batting. But, I mean, rules are made to be broken, so you guys can get a little wild. You could try the one-inch loft batting instead of um, quilt batting and see how that effect looks. Um, just be mindful of when you wash it that it has polyester batting instead of the cotton kind. So different ways you can try this, but definitely want to show off that really dimensional, pretty effect. 
but it's so cool and something you can do at home. So I think a lot of people see quilts and they think, wow, I have to have been sewing for years to be able to figure that out. Um, but that's why I need a good design creative quilting in the hoop the way it is. We want it to be easy and beginner friendly so that if you've never done this, you can sit there, follow along with the step by steps and learn exactly how it's made. Now, if I had my quilt um, space set up with like a rotary cutter and ruler, we'd be trimming to a half inch seam allowance. Lucky for me, my fabric was cut there. So I'm just going to chop away at that stabilizer at the same length. And then I can show you guys my finished little square. We have a couple questions. About yes, that, guys. let's hear the questions we have about it. I'll show that off real quick. I didn't do a clean cut there. But there is our finished Trapunto block from the Baroque quilt. Now, what kind of questions do we have? Let's see if I can answer them. Uh, we have three. So, one All right. is Candy wants to know what you thought of doing it with linen. Yes, Candy wants to know what I thought of doing it with linen. Um, as I just said, I was happily surprised. Um, if you did a full quilt like this, it's beautiful. Again, when you join your blocks, you just stitch in the ditch and they get face sized together and then opened up. So you'll hide those outer tacking stitches and you won't see them. I can just imagine a full quilt done in this pretty blue color is gorgeous. Like I said, that'd be perfect for spring. Um, the patterns are just so nice, but doing it one tone like this, I think is what gives it that really heirloom effect. If you wanted to get crazy, you could pick a shade of thread that's like one or two shades darker than your base fabric, and that would stand out a little more in contrast. Um, but I really like the way this looks because when the light hits it, that's what really shows off that trapunto. But great question on the linen. I like it a lot. Yeah, and that kind of goes along with um, Joe would like to know what kind of fabric you would recommend to do reverse trapunto. For reverse trapunto, I want to say the animals that we stitched were just done with cotton applique and that extra batting. Um, it's hard to explain reverse trapunto process without showing you that particular collection step by step. But I want to say the animal gets embroidered on the top of the hoop in your first hooping and somewhere near the end of that animal it asks to tack batting underneath it and then you end up tearing it out of the hoop and it has that plush underneath side. Then you apply it into the block and tack it down. So as long as your material can be embroidered per usual it should work. I would say cotton is fine if you want to venture into the linen world just interface it like I suggested earlier. That way the linen doesn't fall apart or get ragged. But good questions. Okay. Got another um, one? Just to clarify, we used no-show mesh yes. stabilizer. Yes. He wanted to make sure we used one piece of no-show mesh stabilizer, um, one base layer of batting in the base block shape, and then we added two layers of our, I want to say this is the needle-punched kind of warm and natural batting, and it does have that scrim pattern in it that the people were mentioning earlier. So that is what I have in there. I use two layers to create the trapunto on top of that base layer. So if you're counting layers in the whole block, I have three total layers. Like I mentioned, you could get crazy and add an extra just to see how puffy it gets, or you can change the depth of the loft as well to see what that looks like. Uh, Kara would like to know, do you put the backing on after you've joined all the blocks? Yes, so if you're new to quilting completely, um, we have some videos on our YouTube channel. So if you're watching this on YouTube, I know we're on Facebook and YouTube right now, if you're on YouTube, there is a finishing your quilt video that we have made a couple years ago. Process has never changed for us. It's all stitching straight lines, but you are correct. To finish this off, let's say I have nine of these because I'm making a nine patch quilt. I'll stack up all nine of my blocks. And then when I lay them out in the order I want, I would just take measurements for how big of a back fabric I need. You stitch all your blocks together. The way we like to do it is row by row. And then you join the rows and columns together. Measure your back fabric a little bigger than the quilt top and then you can back and bind. And we show how to do all that in a video step by step so you can kind of follow along. So be sure to check that out if you're new to quilting. I promise it's easy and user friendly. I had never quilted before I worked at Anita and I have handmade my own quilt using our methods that we do. So it is possible. So good questions. We have another one? Yes. <laughs> More, keep, keep them coming you guys. What embroidery machine are we using and the uh, size needle? So the embroidery machine I have is the Baby Lock Solaris 2. Um, we aren't machine biased, but I personally love my baby lock over here. I love how it runs. I'm also, I love brother machines, but we run all our files for all home machine embroidery types. So if you have a Janome or a Husqvarna or a Viking or a Foff, you can embroider any of these. Any purchase from Anita will come with all the file conversions for you. So baby lock two is the one that I'm working on, or yeah, Solaris two, that's the name of it. And the needle is a 7511. We stick to a standard needle for almost everything we do at Anita. If we ever need to switch the needle, we'll be sure to tell you in the project instructions. 
Um, but 7511 is pretty standard and we've used that through vinyl. We've used it through embroidery on paper, quilting. So I'm not kidding when I tell you it tends to work for just about everything. Um, we will change to denim needles occasionally or things like that if it requires a specialty type. But you can do almost any Anita project with just your standard embroidery settings and needles. So good question. Lori would like to know the uh, quilt we have over here with the stone. This tape. one. So Lori wants to know what this quilt is off to. This would be my left shoulder, and you're watching. It's probably on the right side of your screen. That would be the snowflake, um, and it is from our Seasonal Icons Special Edition. So that was a large release from quite a while back. It is made with two by two tiles, and you know what? I'm going to show you guys because I feel like you guys always see it in the back of the video. So I'm going to take the phone, give you guys a peek of that one. Lori's been wanting to know. This is Lori's yes. question. Lori wanted to know. Here it is. That is our snowflake. So I mentioned Seasonal Icon Scenes is the name of this special edition. And the name should tell you there's more than just winter. We have spring, summer, um, and they are made with these little two by two blocks. They can be done in a hoop one by one. My recommendation is to merge more than one in a hooping to save you stabilizer. And you can just stitch, again, you could do like one or two blocks a day for a couple months and make this like a quilting meditation practice, and then even finish a little icon scene. But this method was taken from Stephen Wilson's studio and inspired by his icon artwork. So that is where that concept came from. So very pretty, it makes that snowflake. You guys get to see our whole setup. All right, so good question on that one. Seasonal icon scenes, very cute. Any other questions for us before we head out for the day and I'll give you a run through of all the final info? One last one. Uh, all right. Do you put a layer of batting between the back and the top when you add the back? Another excellent question. We're asked if we put another layer of batting before we finish off the quilt. So when we go to put the back fabric on our whole quilt top, we do not. So if you're curious, I have that last quilt I was going to show you guys with that Trapunto technique. This is another beautiful beginner-friendly collection called Heirloom Seasons. Huge. I'm going to put it in front of myself so you guys can see it. Stunning quilt. And it has all the seasons in it. The reason I grabbed this one is this is one of our few samples we had in stock like with us to show you this Trapunto again. So Heirloom Seasons comes with tons of different techniques, things like folded fabric borders, paper piecing, shadow work, obviously standard embroidery, but it also goes over Trapunto. So there's that cute little birdhouse and bird. Is that a fuzzy on our quilt? And you can kind of see that plush effect here, as well as the summer block for the sailboat. So we do have other releases and collections that they're in. There's a cute little mushroom with that Trapunto effect. And so this is a great one if you are, again, new and want to try a bunch of different techniques in a beginner-friendly quilt that goes together. Like you can quilt all the different seasons together. There's even Christmas in here. There's a Trapunto pine cone. So another great one to show off that and kind of give you a visual of how you can use Trapunto in quilting. Um, again, a lot of our stuff's mix and match friendly, so you can take blocks of the same size from one collection and another and kind of use them together. Um, but this is all from one release in this quilt. And the reason I grabbed this was to show you the back. You can't see much because it's just linen, but if you notice, there's no quilting on the back. That's the difference between a handmade quilt and Anita quilts is that we're not quilting all the layers together. The block does it in the digitizing and we just stitch the blocks together put a piece of back fabric on and then sew the layer, like make a sandwich and then put our binding on. So there's no need for the extra layer of batting because it's already in our block. So if you were with us when we started this design, it had a squaring stitch and we put in one piece of batting and that is what gives the quilt its warmth and that quilted effect. So no extra batting needed. I hope that helped answer a lot of important questions for you guys. I loved how many questions you had for me today. So I hope when we move into other techniques and stuff in the coming weeks, Guys, keep coming back and learn all about it. Even if you already know the technique, there might be something you did not know that we cover. Um, so again, I stitched the Baroque quilt block from that collection. That was the featured one this week for the technique that we were doing. Um, and if you tuned in today, you can shop our Trapunto category for 35% off. Make sure I get that right. Um, and that sale will be active starting today and everyone else will see it go up tomorrow. So no code needed. You should be able to go, if you hit shop all on our website, um, and filter by technique, you can go to Trapunto. We'll also throw a link in the video later so you guys can kind of click through and shop that way as well. But I hope you learned a little bit about our traditional Trapunto technique and thanks for stitching with me guys. Have a good afternoon. Traditional Trapunto technique and thanks for stitching with me guys. Have a good afternoon.